Although a transformation x to ax may move vectors in a variety of directions, it often happens that there are special vectors on which the action of A is quite simple. For example, let's let A be a 2 by 2 matrix, U and V be their respective column vectors. Multiplying A times U, you have 3 times negative 1 plus negative 2 times 1. That gives you negative 5, negative 1. Um, also multiply AV. When you multiply matrix A and matrix V together, you get 4, 2. Now notice that if you take vector V and double each entry, you get 4 and 2. So vector V, you can stretch from the origin to the point 2, 1. A times V transforms it by doubling its length. So A times V is the same thing as 2 times vector V. Vector U is negative 1, 1, so that vector points into this quadrant. By multiplying it by A, that vector gets transformed or moved to negative 5, negative 1. So there wasn't a scalar multiplication in the transformation of U to AU. Some vectors are transformed by matrix A into scalar multiples of themselves. And that's what we're going to look at in this video is A times V simply double the length of it. So let's look at a definition. An eigenvector of an n by n matrix A is a non-zero vector x such that A times x is equal to lambda x for a scalar x. And we saw that up here. AV was equal to 2V. This scalar is called an eigenvalue of A if there is a non-trivial solution of this equation, AX equals lambda X. Such an X is called an eigenvector corresponding to lambda. Let's look at an example, matrix A, and I pulled this off of the front slide. It's the same two by two matrix. I have changed up matrix U and V. So those two vectors are different. Our question is, are U and V eigenvectors of matrix A? So what we'll do is, we'll, like in the first example, we're going to multiply them, A times U and A times V. A times U gives us this 2 by 1 matrix, which just happens to be a scalar multiple of vector U. So A times U works out to negative 4 times u. A times v, we don't get the same result. Matrix A times vector v, if you multiply these, you get negative 9 and 11. Well, vector v is 3 and negative 2, but to get from negative 9, 11 to 3, negative 2, there is no scalar multiple that will do both. U is an eigenvector corresponding to an eigenvalue of negative 4, and that's because negative 4 times U gave us the same vector as A times U. But V is not an eigenvector of A. We could not find a scalar multiple. Second example, show that 7 is an eigenvalue of matrix A same matrix, and find the corresponding eigenvectors. First, AX has to equal 7X because that's what we're trying to show is 7 as an eigenvalue. So AX equals 7X must have a non-trivial solution. Long story short, um, it needs to have a solution X that's not all zeros. Okay, so let's take this equation move the 7x over, ax minus 7x equals 0, and we can rewrite that as a minus 7 times the identity matrix of appropriate size times vector x equals 0. It kind of looks like you factor out a minus 7, 
just remember, we're dealing with matrices. A minus 7 times the identity matrix. Here's matrix A minus... Now, the identity matrix would be this diagonal of 1s, but since we're multiplying by 7, it's a diagonal of 7s. With subtraction, 1 minus 7 is negative 6. 5 minus 7... Excuse me. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. 5 minus 0 is 5. 6 minus 0 is 6. And finally, 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So this is the matrix we get after we subtract A minus 7 times the identity. Now, in order to see if there's a non-trivial solution, we're going to augment that with a column of zeros. We're setting it equal to zero. We need a column of zeros. Row reduced, you can tell that there's no pivot in the second column, so x2 is free. Now, if there's a free variable, then we have definitely are geared for having eigenvectors and eigenvalues. x1 minus x2 is equal to zero. And again, because there's no pivot in x2, it's considered a free variable. Since x1, if we carry this negative x2 over, x1 is equal to x2, we can write a general solution where basically you factor out x2 and you have x1, x2, but they're both going to have coefficients of 1. Therefore, any vector of this form, as long as x2 is not 0, is an eigenvector with lambda equals 7. And again, that's because we subtracted the 7 times the identity matrix. So 7 is an eigenvalue. Again, if you know you've got a free variable, at least one, you're in good shape. The set of all solutions of A minus lambda times the identity matrix, X equals zero, has a non-trivial solution, <clears throat> and those solutions are the null space of A minus lambda I. This set is a subspace of Rn, and it's called the eigenspace of A corresponding to lambda. The eigenspace consists of the zero vector and all the vectors, excuse me, all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda. Let's look at an example. Let's move our matrix up to a three by three square matrix. And let's look at a known eigenvalue of A, which is two. Find a basis of the corresponding eigenspace, which ties into our last unit. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, since A is a known, has a known eigenvalue of two, we're gonna calculate matrix A minus two times the identity. Remember, this is our lambda. So matrix A, I just recopied that. Two times the identity matrix, that's a diagonal of twos, zeros everywhere else, subtracting positions, 4 minus 2 is 2, and I'm not going to belabor you with all the details. Um, basically, it's a position thing, so like, if you go right dead in the middle, 1 minus 2, that'll be negative 1. Feel free to use your calculators. This should be okay to calculate by hand. Once you've made the calculation of A minus lambda I, which is this 3 by 3 matrix, the second step is to augment it with a column of zeros. So same matrix, augmented with a column of zeros. Row reduced echelon form, we don't have a pivot for x2 or 3 because the second and third columns are missing pivots. Both of these variables are free. x1 minus 1 half x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 0. That's what this top row translates into. 
So x1, if you solve for it, you get a positive 1 half x2 and a minus 3x3. Solving for x1, you get this top entry. Because x2 and x3 are free, well, I'm just going to list them, x2, x3. But carefully solve for x1 and write it in terms of x2 and x3. Like we did in the last unit, the x2 terms from this vector, or excuse me, uh, matrix, we have a one-half coefficient, a one, and no x2 in the third position. x3, we have a negative three, nothing, and a one. Negative three, zero, one. These two vectors give you a basis for the eigenspace. They are spawned from the eigenvalue of two. And so these two three by one entry matrices will give you the basis for that eigenspace. The eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are the entries on its main diagonal. So if you can get the lower left to be a triangle of all zeros, then your main diagonal, 3, 0, 2, give you the eigenvalues of that matrix. You can also have the top triangle, all zeros, that's triangular as well. 4 and 1 are the eigenvalues for matrix B. And I did want to note, I put careful, but it's more of a note. Zero can be an eigenvalue if this has a non-trivial solution. Zero is an eigenvalue of A if and only if A is not an invertible matrix. And so I did an extra example to look at this. Is five an eigenvalue of A? Matrix A is a three by three. So what we'll do is we're going to check. The first thing is if you're claiming this is an eigenvalue, multiply it times an identity matrix, subtract it from matrix A. So A minus 5 times the identity, here's matrix A, 5I, subtract each position carefully, and this is the result, a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, take this matrix, augment it with a column of zeros, and that's to check to see if there's any free variables. Well, it turns out A minus 5i augmented with a column of zeros, when you row reduce that, you have a pivot in every column, and that means there's no free variables. No free variables, means that A minus 5i is invertible. Therefore, 5 is not an eigenvalue. Just remember, you, you definitely need some free variables. All it takes is one, a couple's fine, but if you get one that has a pivot in every column, that means that that matrix is invertible and 5 is not an eigenvalue.